quarterfinal stage is ready to conclude. Champions League Tuesday preview. Jimmy Conrad, Jonathan Johnson, as we discuss PSG against Bayern Munich and Chelsea hosting Porto. Champions League Tuesday preview begins right now. The pressure continues to mount as the world's top teams compete for soccer's most coveted trophy. The Champions League is down to the final eight and you can stream every match live on Paramount Plus as they cut the field to four teams following this week's second leg of the quarterfinal stage. Don't miss a minute of world-class soccer, including PSG against Bayern Munich and Real Madrid against Liverpool. Paramount Plus, live sports, breaking news and a mountain of entertainment. Go to ParamountPlus.com to try it for free. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Que Golazo, our Champions League Tuesday preview. Jimmy Conrad, how are you, sir? Yeah, I'm doing great. Uh, Happy to be here, as always, and excited for another big week of action. Let's go. Let's do it. JJ, Jonathan Johnson from Paris. How are you, my friend? Doing very, very well. Can't complain. And uh, likewise, just looking forward to getting into uh, all of these upcoming matches. Such a a great week of soccer to look forward to. Absolutely. Uh, Another great week as the uh, quarterfinal stage of the Champions League wraps up and we are talking Tuesday's action. And of course, we begin with the big one. PSG hosting Bayern Munich. Uh, leading 3-2 in aggregate here. Jonathan Johnson, give us the load on just on injuries and everything, but also PSG, right, making some news in Forbes. Yeah, absolutely. So it's been a big day of news out of Paris. Uh, we've got PSG entering the top 10, uh, Forbes, uh, you know, most influential football clubs for the first time ever. So that's big news for them. Uh, they're taking a bit of a strange approach uh, pre-game uh, ahead of Bayern. Obviously, we know the Bayern squad because they have to travel from Germany to France before the game. But PSG won't be listing their squads or their medical updates until tomorrow. That's my understanding, uh, having heard from a few members of staff at the club earlier today. Uh, that gives me the suspicion that they're going to give Marquinhos the maximum amount of time to prove his fitness. Uh, Marco Verratti trained uh, earlier today, as did uh, Mauro Icardi, uh, Alessandro Florenzi. So, uh, you know, those two Italians, uh, you know, who were part of the the Italy squad that had the major COVID-19 outbreak after the international break, they're now negative. So they'll be in line to feature, um, but judging by Maurizio Pochettino's comments in the pre-match press conference, Verratti might not be fit enough to start, which obviously would be problematic because Verratti would give PSG so much in terms of keeping hold of the the, the ball and uh, dictating the pace of the game and, and you know basically having some control, more control than they had uh, last week. So we'll have to wait and see uh, you know, exactly what uh, you know, the decisions might be regarding PSG's squad until a few hours before the game. What about, is can that, I jump in really quick? What about Keeler Navas? Because that's a big loss for them in goal because he came yeah. off at the break at halftime never trained he he, 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 he wasn't he wasn't injured it was just uh pochettino boxing smart and bringing off his most important player interesting interesting okay cool (laughs) and just to add a quick note everybody by the time you listen to this uh you might have had more updated information from psg's camp so we're just giving you the latest as we tape uh but carry on jonathan jonathan sorry sorry i I just i'm a huge keeler nava stan over here and i just wanted to make sure no no jimmy Jimmy, who are you talking to this is keeler (laughs) nava's fan club it is it is it is it is k keeler Navas pod. <laughs> Very good, Jimmy. Thanks, thanks, thanks. We might need to copyright that. All right, JJ, <laughs> any final notes before Jimmy chimes in? Yeah, uh, even if he is in the squad, I don't think Marquinhos is going to be fit enough to play much of a role. It sounds like it's something that could keep him out for multiple weeks. Uh, and I think it's just hopeful for PSG that they can at least have him as part of the group because he plays such a big role in terms of his personality, uh, you know, obviously being captain of this side. But that puts, puts President Kimpembe in a bit of uh, a pressure situation where he'll be leading PSG as captain for what I think is going to be the first time from the start uh, in a Champions League match. So, you know, obviously he'll be playing a big role, but I'm sure we'll get into that later. But at the mo- at this moment in time, PSG won't be making any communication uh, on their squad selection until a couple of hours before the match. All right. Well, Jimmy, um, wh- what do you make of this game? And by the way, everybody, I'm really disappointed you haven't mentioned the fact that I predicted 3-2. It's really, I'm really disappointed in both of you. Like you said it off recording and you didn't even begin the podcast with that. Shame on both of you. <laughs> well, I'm just curious to see 
before I give my thoughts, what your score line's going to be <laughs> this week, because you clearly got this one figured out. I mean, you had PSG correctly beating Bayern Munich last week, three, two. Can we just start with your score so I can then work off my, my odds and bets? All right, and, fine. And my I'm actually, I'm actually going two one Bayern Munich in this game, uh, with, which would make PSG, uh, going through regardless, but I, I see Bayern winning this leg in this one. Uh, I just think Bayern's going to try to prove something both offensively and defensively. And I think to uh, JJ's point, the Ratti not starting Marquinhos is a major loss. So that to me says something about how Bayern might be able to capitalize on that. 2-1 Bayern Munich by PSG going through. Do you guys have a phrase? A broken clock is right two times a day. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I usually say uh, even a blind squirrel finds a nut every once in a while, right? <laughs> even, the, like even the sun shines on a dog's, uh, like that was a white man can jump uh, quote. But yes, uh, I, listen, I told you I'm going to be wrong, but that's what I have, 2-1. Two, 2-1 one. Two, one Bayern Munich in this game. What do you think, Jim? God, this is really tough because we're talking about injuries for Bayern Munich and and I do want to applaud uh PSG again for for their performance last week. I thought they were very thoughtful and and efficient in how they set up. Uh, you know, when you when you this has got to be a tough ask. I feel like, hey, I'm Mauricio Pochettino. Let's just let's role play here. Hey, Neymar, uh, can you uh, can you maybe defend Kimmich this game? It would really make a big difference for the. I feel like you got to plead with the guy to actually play some defense. You know, and and he did it. And not only that, he was excellent on both sides of the ball, Neymar. I thought he played within himself. He didn't bring any of his normal antics that we usually associate with him. And if Mauricio Pochettino has that type of respect with Neymar, then I'm sure that trickles down to everybody else. And I think, again, they're going to be very efficient in terms of how they move. They had a good win on the weekend. And, and I want to say that, conversely, with, with Bayern Munich, they didn't play that well against Union Berlin. They gave up a late goal. And, and it, if you didn't see, there is 1-1. One, one. They're up 1-0 at home, five minutes left to go. And the way they give up opportunities, it's just like they shut off. This one was off a long throw. The ball went out of bounds. A Berlin guy, a Union Berlin guy, just bombs into the corner, long throw, and comes in and then taps. It's, 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 it's crazy to me that a team of Bayern Munich's quality and stature could give up these really, really cheap goals. So consi- This isn't just a one-off. This is consistently giving up cheap goals. And we saw it in the first leg you're going to get punished by the players that are world-class. And, and I, I just don't know if I can uh, agree to that two to one scoreline in, in favor of Bayern. So again, let's go back to the injuries. Lewandowski's out. Serge Gnabry is going to, going to be out. Boateng's hurt. Kingsley Coman is hurt. Lucas Hernandez has a rib injury. Nicholas Sula is out. Goretzka is going to be out. I mean, <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of guys. And, and I think that it just could be too big of an ask. I, I, li- I actually like PSG to win this one. Both teams to score is kind of where I'm leaning in terms of, of betting. Or, or, or PSG to win and, and over two and a half goals. There are going to be goals in this one. They both give up a ton of opportunities. I mean, Strasbourg this weekend had some good opportunities against PSG as well. So there's not going to be a shortage of goals. It just depends on like where we want to grease it uh, from an odds perspective. But, but no know, matter what, no matter what, we see PSG going through. Uh, at this oh, point. yeah, I do. I do. I think, I think this run for Bayern's going to end. And, and that's not a big surprise. Once we saw Robert Lewandowski go down, it just I think it was just going to be too big of an ask, especially against the PSG team that looks pretty motivated. And to my point earlier, just just ready to do what it takes to get past Bayern Munich in this one. Yeah. So I, I'm curious. There is one other bet that I do want you guys to consider and think about before we all decide together what we should go with. The referee that's refing this game. Oops, sorry. Siri's yelling at me. Uh, which is crazy. Another like, one listen, that happens. Siri, don't, listen, I'm don't doing a podcast. Stop listening, listening to me, then selling me ads on my Instagram account later. That's Siri, so weird. Siri's like, let, wait, let me tell you my. Let, let me tell you. Yeah, this is exactly what's going to happen. I can see the future. But uh, the referee that's refing this one refed their game, uh, the Champions League final last year. Oh wow! He gave out eight, eight yellow cards. So if you go over two and a half goals, which I think we can all assume it's going to be a goal fest, and and. Let's see, over two and a half goals and over six cards. It's plus 290. I just think this guy likes to keep things in check. He also refed the game between Chelsea and Atletico Madrid, the second leg where he didn't give the penalty, but then he gave that 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 savage red card for the, like, the cheeky headbutt that wasn't really a headbutt, but Rudiger went down like he got shot. Anyway, I don't want to get into the weeds here. I'm just saying this ref likes to give out cards. Yeah, no, I think it's a fair bet. Uh, Jonathan Johnson, how do you see this one uh, ending with your final score prediction? I mean, it's interesting. There's so much to, to sort of unpack there. I mean, on the topic of yellow cards, am I right in thinking that they get wiped at the end of this game going into the semifinals or do they still carry over? Because if they do carry over, 
Then you've got guys like Neymar and uh, Idris Agye walking a tightrope because they went through that first leg, uh, knowing that if they picked up a booking, they'd miss the return leg. No, uh, surely they get wiped over. I'm pretty sure they get wiped off uh, and, and the danger is in the first leg. But in any case, uh, you know, I think that also made Neymar's performance all the more impressive. Uh, and I think Mauricio Pochettino deserves a huge amount of credit because you look at all the players that were dropping like flies during that match. And obviously, uh, Hansi Flick faced the same challenge as well. But for Pochettino, who doesn't have the same strength in depth at his disposal uh, that Flick does, to be making some of those changes, you know, taking huge risks, I mean, at one point, PSG were lining up with a defense that had Danilo Pereira filling in at center back, uh, Colin Dagba playing a right back, Mitchell Backer playing a left back. I mean, that's essentially a reserve PSG uh, defense. You know, and obviously we saw that with the amount of chances that Bayern created. But still, you know, for PSG to come away with that result shows that, you know, they they have added some resolve to their character over the years, uh, you know, which is which is great to finally see, considering the number of capitulations, uh, you know, that we've had to witness over the years, Barcelona, Real Madrid, Manchester United. So, you know, it does appear that PSG are made of tougher stuff uh, these days. And I, I agree with you guys. I think that PSG will get the job done. I also went for a 2-1 prediction, but my 2-1 prediction was in favor of PSG. I, I still think that Verratti and Marquinhos will obviously be huge blows, but I think playing at home, PSG will be in a better situation now, a better position to potentially control at least some of the game because there were large swathes of that match in Munich that were just completely out of their control. And it was just, you know, sort of wild to see the way that it ended up. But Jimmy made a really good point as well about the low quality of some of the goals that Bayern give up. I mean, you look at some of the basics that the defense just aren't doing right. I mean, okay, you can't really legislate for someone like Manuel Neuer making the kind of error that he did in Mbappe scoring the opening goal. But some of the other defensive errors, uh, I mean, I know it was a superb assist uh, from Neymar to find Marquinhos, but still, you know, to be le- leaving that much space and just, you know, basically having the ball played over the top of you and, and cutting everyone else out of the game, uh, you know, that is really unlike uh, Bayern. And I, I, I feel confident for PSG going into this one. I'm, I'm going to say 2-1. A, a draw, a score draw wouldn't surprise me. And I think I mentioned that in my prediction, but I, I don't see Bayern winning this one. Yeah. That's why I do want to say something really quick, JJ. Uh, the last five games that PSG have had at home, they've only won one of those five. So that, that does give me a, a little bit of pause, but I just feel like when these guys know it's the Champions League, they, they hit a different switch. They're they, this. They've got different gravy, as I like to say. They're just working with some different gravy there. And I think Neymar in particular really starts to elevate his thing. I think he is really, really motivated to win this this competition uh, with PSG. And so I, I really was really impressed with him. We didn't really talk about him much. I mean, yeah, he set up both goals, but to your point, he didn't get a yellow. He just really played within himself. I, I can't speak enough uh, about Neymar. That said, I do want to say, because it's 3-2 in favor of PSG, whoever scores first... Wow, they're going to be in a pretty decent position to have that in-game momentum. You know, sometimes that's hard for managers to control. We saw it at the end of the first leg where Bayern were just coming and they were coming and they were coming. And then all of a sudden, one counterattack later, it was 2-2 at that point and killing Mbappe scores make it 3-2, which is a dagger of a goal, by the way. The fact that Bayern left themselves that vulnerable at 2-2, like just take Take it, take a two-two, and maybe hope to get something, but really tighten things up in the back. And the fact that they just can't help themselves—it's like in their DNA to attack with eight or nine guys. But against a team like PSG, that can absolutely kill you on the counter. I, I don't know. It, It's—I I just wish I had seen a better Bayern performance this weekend. And I know they had made some changes, but the fact that they continued not only to give up that goal on a long throw-in, by the way, where they just shut off at the wrong time with five minutes left—how does that even happen? Champions don't do that. Then, then. I don't know. I, maybe I could wrap my hand around that. But if Bayern do score first, it, it does put a lot of pressure on PSG of like, oh man, here we go. Maybe this isn't going to be our season ag- again. Yeah. And then you well, talked take, about take all it. those absentees as well. Go ahead, JJ. Taking Jimmy's points, I'm just going to pose a question to you guys. There's a lot of speculation now about Flick's future. You know, is he going to take over from Joachim Löw as a Germany national team coach this summer? Do you think that there is perhaps starting to become some sort of disconnect between Flick and the players? I mean, there's always going to be a natural depressurization. I think when you win as much as Bayern have won 
over the last calendar year. Uh, you know, I think you probably sort of feel, you know, is there is there much more that we can really do together? And if the rumors of the rift uh, between Flick and uh, Sally Hamizic, the sporting director, are really true, surely that must be impacting on the dressing room uh, a little bit, uh, you know, because it's something that I've read a fair bit about in the last couple of weeks. Uh, and, a, and it seems to be playing a bigger role at Bayern Munich uh, as the weeks go by. So wait, can I say something? Every time, uh, why does the sporting director, and I, well, how do you say his name again? I don't want to. Sally Hamizic. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I'm just going to let you say because it, it just rolls off your tongue so so beautifully, JJ. Well, you're still working on Leon. And uh, I know. I, listen, don't I don't want to get into it. All right, here we go. So my gringo ness is in, on full display here. But, but he sits on the bench during games. And I find that to be extremely odd that the sporting director sits on the bench. And, and he's that close to Hansi Flick on the staff and hearing all that stuff. And, and I, I, at some point, if I was the boss, like, dude, can I just have my own space to do my thing? Like, why are you right on top of me? I, f- I would feel like I was getting micromanaged if the sporting director was right there for yeah, every single point. minute. I th- I th- I th- if I remember correctly, Bayern are the only team that have done that. I mean, I think it's a, it's a choice of the club and perhaps the management setup, but there are some clubs in Germany that do do that. I remember seeing Hones years ago, I think when Magat was coach of Bayern, seeing him dressed up in a Bayern tracksuit every now and then, but Bayern were nowhere near the, the, the sort of side that they are these days at that moment. In yeah, and that's the problem which originates to your question, JJ, about like what's Hansi Flick's future. When you reach the absolute peaks, which is what they did last year, winning everything, right? Everything. And obviously the objective for a professional, whether you're a player or a manager, is like, doesn't matter. We keep going, we keep going. But something has to give sometimes, especially when there's obstacles and you think to yourself, well, I've given everything to this club already. And I took over, you know, after a manager that was struggling at the beginning of the season. So what else can I give? Do I move on and go to the national team or do I continue and try and reach another height? It's a really tricky one. It's kind of like victims of your own success. In many ways, so it's going to be just, to just for a little more, just for a little more context. The rift between, or the supposed rift between Sally Hamizic uh, and Flick, supposedly stems out of the fact that Bayern hadn't spent enough on the players that they brought in and added to their squad. Uh, over the the last summer transfer window, I mean, obviously we know that they've gone out and spent big on Open Meccano for next season, but they went and brought in the likes of Bruno Saar, uh, Mark Roca, uh, you know, basically guys who were very on Bayern, like Chuba Moting as well. Yeah, like basically, you know, Bayern were being reasonable with the with the transfer fees that they were spending. You know, almost frugal, uh, whereas Flick wanted to see greater quality coming in uh, to add depth to his squad. Perhaps. Well, I do remember that's something that we all talked about at the very beginning of the season. Like, obviously, like Bayern Munich is Bayern Munich, but did they do enough to you know uh, deepen their squad? So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Uh, well, I, I can understand where the rift is coming from. Just to take one more extra step on this, because if Hansi Flick is feeling pressure from the sporting director or, or anybody above uh, on the board of Bayern because of these performances, because Lewandowski's out and maybe some other guys have been hurt and it's been hurting the team performance overall. Why wouldn't Hansi Flick go, well, you didn't sign anybody a consequence to help me through these moments of difficulty. So what do you expect from me? You know, and I can see yeah. where that, that rift could start. Yeah. yeah. So it's, this summer is going to be very intriguing indeed. All right. We're going to take a break when we come back. Uh, from uh, one German who's dealing with things to another one who's looking pretty good as they look ahead to the semifinals. Chelsea against Porto. We'll be right back with Que Golazo Tuesday Champions League preview. Welcome back, everybody, to Que Golazo Champions League Tuesday preview. Jimmy Conrad, Jonathan hi, Johnson, hi. and now, hi, hi, and hi, Jimmy Siri as well. I don't know. I, I don't want to say that, actually, because then my phone will go off. All right. Uh, let's talk Chelsea against Porto. Uh, host to the Portuguese side, leading to nothing. Thomas Tuchel feeling good. They had a good win this weekend against Crystal Palace. Christian Pulisic got a brace. Everybody, you know, feeling reasonably confident. You would expect that Chelsea will finish the job, Jimmy Conrad. What do you think? A hundred percent. I was really impressed with their performance this past weekend against Crystal Palace, four to one. I think we could see, and everybody could see, even when Frank Lampard was in charge, that this team had it in them to score a lot of goals. And now that Tuchel took over, everything got very uh, pragmatic. Everything was very defense focused. Everything was, let's get our team shape in place first before we start to release the hounds, as I like to say. 
this was a really good performance. The way they were taking people on, the confidence that they now have going forward, I think it's a sign of good things for Chelsea overall and throughout the rest of the season and moving forward with Tuchel. But not a good thing for Porto. Now they do welcome Tarami back into the team. Sergio Oliveira, who's got 19 goals and leads the team. He's going to be back. They both missed leg one due to suspensions. I don't think it's going to be enough. Those two quote-unquote away goals, even though they're playing in the same place at Sevilla's home stadium for this leg two as well, even though this is Chelsea's home game. I think that's going to be too much. When Mason Mount is playing like he is and he scored his first ever Champions League goal and Ben Chilwell all of a sudden came out of nowhere with this composure in the middle of the box, 1v1, scores his first ever Champions League goal, you suspect that other guys are going to step up and score and not have to rely necessarily on first-timers scoring their first ever goals. So I like Chelsea here. I know that uh, JJ knows Thomas Tuchel quite intimately during his time at at PSG. And there's something that, that JJ said maybe a month ago, five weeks ago, six weeks ago, that, that still stuck with me, that Tuchel doesn't do very good when he is uh, the favorite in matchups. You know, he overthinks things or whatever it may be, and that, but he's much better as the underdog. And, and I'm, I'm very curious to get JJ's thoughts on this, knowing that they're kind of in the driver's seat here for leg two. Go ahead, JJ. I'm not going to cue you in. You come in, man. <laughs> no, no, absolutely. Jimmy's right. Um, you know, I think one thing that we've got to bear in mind with this Porto side is they conceded so many goals to get to this point. I mean, they they advanced on away goals against Juventus. Yeah, sure. Mm. Um, you know, the 3-2 uh, in Turin was one of the most entertaining games of the, the knockout stage so far, perhaps only eclipsed uh, by Bayern and PSG last week. But still, Porto have never really had that sort of defensive solidity, uh, you know, since leaving the group stage. And... You know, I think with those two key guys missing last week, it was always going to be an uphill task for Porto. I, I do think that they were probably capable of keeping things closer than they did, but it, it is a killer uh, situation to be in now. Uh, you know, obviously a Porto early goal could change everything, but, you know, this suits the way that Tuchel has had Chelsea playing for the majority of his tenure so far in that they can focus on the defense and not get too worried or tied up about, you know, what they're going to look like going forward. It would be great uh, to see Tuchel, you know, send Chelsea out and play similarly to the way that they did against Crystal Palace. I think probably my biggest takeaway from that result and performance was the fact that it finally looks like Kai Havertz might have arrived uh, for Chelsea, which I think would be a big game changer for them uh, you know we'll see if he manages to to take that form into this game uh, against Porto but like you said I think the return of uh, you know the the two key figures for Porto is is too little too late I think they really needed to put in a stronger performance in the first leg uh, I, I thought that they would be capable of keeping things tighter uh, and consequently I think we could see uh, you know Chelsea winning this match you know perhaps Porto get a goal but for me, I, I think even if Chelsea draw this game uh, or were to lose 1-0, they'd still go through because of the two goals scored in the first leg. So uh, I think it's this one to me seems, uh, seems done. Uh, whether or not that plays into the way that Tuchel tinkers with his team, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. But, uh, you know, traditionally, or at least for, from what I saw from him at PSG, PSG would get a bit complacent going into that second game. And I think something that perhaps changes it slightly here is the fact that neither game has been played at each team's actual stadium. So, you know, Chelsea won't be at Stamford Bridge. In, and in that sense, they won't be as comfortable as they might mm -hmm. have been if they'd been able to play in London. Yeah, when I say host, obviously there's an asterisk there. And the other thing, by the way, aside from Kai Havertz, Pulisic uh, gaining a lot of confidence from this weekend, adding much more depth. I think uh, Andreas Christensen will be available. And N'Golo Kante said himself, I I'm good to travel. So, you know, there are good options here, Jimmy, for uh, Thomas Tuchel and Chelsea. And like JJ said, the work has been done already in the first leg. So you just think that it's all about just like wrapping it up with a, a nice ribbon. Well, something for everybody to consider, and this will uh, influence how we look at Manchester City uh, tomorrow in our preview, is the fact that Chelsea play Manchester City in the FA Cup semifinals this weekend. And so it's something to take into consideration in terms of who you're starting and, and who you're not and who you're giving your rest to. And do you want to hold N'Golo Conte for, for the weekend as opposed to maybe running him out against the Porto team that you should be able to control uh, the, the whole situation without him? So that that's for me very interesting because I think it will impact who Tuchel starts. So I don't know if we'll see Kai Havertz. Maybe Giroud will start. Uh, maybe Zach will get in. And then maybe if you need to bring those guys on because you don't have control of the situation at halftime, then, then you could maybe consider bringing those guys on to, to finish off whatever situation you need. So that right. gives me a little bit of pause with regard to 
you know, which way I would lean betting wise for me. I think that Porto will try to go out there. They, they didn't look scared in, in the first leg. They were really unlucky in that first half, right? The, the only shot they gave up in the half was a goal to Mason Mount. They made a mistake on that one. The second goal, Tecatito Corona, the Mexican international made a mistake that Chilwell pounced on. Porto weren't out of that, that match by any stretch of the imagination. So I think over the balance, 180 minutes, they're going to deserve a goal. I think they will get one. I just think that Chelsea, as that game stretches out and Porto has to has to go for it a little bit, that's where Chelsea's going to kill them. And I could see Chelsea, I could see a 2-1 Chelsea. Uh, so both teams to score and Chelsea to win is plus 265. I'm leaning towards that, though. If they did draw, I'd feel bad about it because, you know, I think there is a, a narrative to build there because Porto... Uh, you can't sleep on these guys. You can never sleep on Portuguese teams in European competition, but I don't think they're going to win. But but I'm leaning more towards Chelsea doing the business. I feel like they've got a, a nice wave of confidence at the moment. Yeah, and just to add one more thing to this, by the way, in the first leg, uh, Porto were doing well until the end of each half. Like mm-hmm. Mason Mount scored in the 32nd minute, and then Ben Chilwell scored in the 85th, to your point about Tecatito's mistake. So it's about finishing off halves well. I'm not, I agree, Chelsea's got this, but I, I could see a tight one here, JJ. Maybe 2 1 Chelsea, Porto getting a goal. Yeah, it's interesting that you guys uh, mentioned that because I actually went for one nil Chelsea. Uh, yeah, it could my, be very in tight my, yep. in my prediction. I, I think that Tuchel will set Chelsea up similarly to how we've seen them earlier on in his reign, just to make sure uh, that they get the result. You know, there's no silly mistakes made. I think an early Porto goal could completely change mm-hmm. that, uh, but I don't see Porto doing better than a draw in this match. So my personal pick is a, a one nil win for Chelsea. But uh, I think you know something that's also quite interesting about what you observed, uh, Luis Miguel with sort of the way that Porto were made to pay at the end of each half is, you know, I think that's normal when you come up against a team like Chelsea, you have so much strength in depth compared to so uh, so many of the other teams uh, in the Champions League. You know, Porto were missing two of their key players. And most of these guys have played the majority of games this season. You know, Porto don't have that same uh, strength in depth. And it's something that I'm kind of seeing a lot of at the moment, especially with Jesse Lingard at West Ham. When you've got guys who are fresher legged, you know, they're able to play at that sort of same quality that we're used to, uh, you know, in non-COVID times, uh, you know, and I think only the teams with the the, the most strength in depth uh, are able to maintain, you know, quite a high quality and, and teams like Porto are going to pay the price for not being as well equipped as their, some of their European rivals. Yeah. Uh, and the only good thing is like this weekend, Porto won by just taking care of their minutes with their respective players. Tecatito Corona came off uh, a little earlier uh, and, you know, Luis Diaz didn't start, etc. So, uh, all right, so I have two one. JJ has won nothing. Jimmy finalize it, uh, ended up, conclude it. Yeah, I'll say two one. If you guys think that JJ is on something and uh, something good, not necessarily, I don't know. I don't know what you're smoking <laughs> or drinking over there, JJ. But uh, to win to nil, if, if to win That's and get the, the shutout is plus <laughs> plus one ninety five for Chelsea. Uh, the exact score line for Chelsea to win one zero is plus five seventy five. The the heavy favorite is the draw at 1-1 one, one plus 525 for exact scores. 2-1 for Chelsea's plus 750. And then uh, if you just think that Chelsea's going to get a clean sheet to JJ's point, they're very good at uh, putting a lot of people behind the ball and, and then making it very difficult for anybody to play through them. To to get a clean sheet, it is plus 145 in favor of Chelsea. I like the 2-1, both teams to score. I think Porta will do something uh, and, and fi- find a way. You know, whether it's a penalty or, or something, Sergio Oliveira will probably step up and score. He's plus 225 to score anytime. Uh, so, so I like the 2-1, two, uh, plus 265, Chelsea to win both teams to score. Yep, I'm with you on that one. So with that, we have PSG going through. We have Chelsea going through. Isn't that something? Uh, you know, Thomas Tuchel, once again, getting closer to probably another Champions League final, maybe. The same for PSG. Should be interesting. All right, well, that's it. That's our Champions League Tuesday preview. Final words Final thoughts. Uh, JJ, let's begin with you. I mean, I don't think there's really that much to to add. Just really. Well, you can say anything. It doesn't even have to be Champions League. (laughs) Yeah, I know, but I'm I'm, I'm struggling to think of a a similar nugget to last week with the Cudela uh, suspension. So uh, I'll hand over to Jimmy if he's got anything to add, but I'm just uh, really excited for these rounds of matches to, to get underway. Absolutely. I just wanted Luis Miguel to, to tap the brakes, okay, with Chelsea getting to a final. You already handed it I over didn't to him. Say <laughs> Put some respect to on the Real Madrid's final. name. Every time that, that, at least for me, anytime that I say in a prediction, whether it's here or my YouTube channel, whatever it is, shameless plug alert, I, I just, <laughs> I, I, I never go with Madrid and they always win. I never put enough respect on their name. They figure out ways to win. So when Madrid gets past Liverpool, which I think 
we're probably going to lean that way just because of uh, how they're playing. Again, first goal in that one, though, could change a lot of things. Um, you got to put some respect on there. Or Liverpool, even Liverpool gets through, you know. I don't think it's going to be that easy for Chelsea. We'll no, see. I'm with you. In fact, I was <laughs> wrong. I had Porto winning this one overall in my bracket when I'm looking at it. So I was wrong anyways. Uh, and I had Liverpool beating Liber- uh, Real Madrid overall. So I was wrong in the bracket overall. I'm just saying that I'm just Tuchel, time. Tuchel goes to the semifinals. Once again, one game away from a final, uh, which yeah, is yeah. pretty pretty remarkable but yeah no absolutely we always like we always say no to real madrid and then real madrid are like what are you doing we're the best team in this in the history of this tournament it's it's insane i actually wrote an article on it last week because Tuchel was speaking in the build-up to the game to to german television about uh sort of the emotional aspect of his sacking by psg around christmas time Uh, and i was writing about the possibility of a potential matchup with psg in the final uh i'm not sure Mm. at least i didn't put it down in my bracket as as that happening i had psg getting past bayern but falling to city chelsea getting past porto and then falling to liverpool but now now that Liverpool look to be on the ropes against Real Madrid, who knows? You know that perhaps uh, throws a bit of a spanner in the in the works. But no, uh, T- Tuchel's Tuchel's coaching star has really risen uh, over the last sort of twelve to eighteen months. You know, and for him to be on the verge of potentially putting a second Champions League final down on his CV is uh, is pretty impressive. Particularly considering that he took over this team towards the end of January, and uh, you know they're already getting uh, that close to a, a potential major piece of silverware. And we just jinxed Thomas <laughs> Duhoy. You're, you're welcome, Tommy. <laughs> That's it, everybody. Thank you so much. And make sure you stay tuned with Keo Lasso as we'll have the recap of Tuesday as well and Champions League previews and recaps for Wednesday as well. Jonathan Johnson, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure as always, guys. Glad to see that Jimmy's uh, hand is on the mend after that savaging from Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Conrad, thank you, brother. Uh, JJ had to go there. I'm done. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. (laughs) Thank you so much, everybody. Hey, everybody. I want to thank Jonathan Johnson and Jimmy Conrad for joining me today. Don't forget to follow us on Kegolazo Pod on Twitter. Leave a comment on Apple Podcasts. Follow us on Spotify, Stitcher, CBSSports.com, YouTube.com forward slash Kegolazo. Don't forget, we have plenty more to come, including Champions League recaps, Wednesday previews, weekend previews, and so much more. Have a great, great day. (laughs) 